Hi, I'm Chet Marchwinski at the Lean Enterprise Institute, and I'm joined today by David Verbal, uh, an LEI faculty member and a subject expert on how to coach and mentor uh, in a continuous improvement environment and develop people. Welcome, David. Good to see you again. Thank you, Chet. Good morning. Uh, LEI is about to uh, launch an, a new and, and unique series of uh, workshops on coaching skills for uh, uh, lean managers, continuous improvement mm -hmm. professionals, and such. Uh, why why are we launching this and can you tell us some more about it well i have i've been teaching coaching workshops for lei for several years and um, i've recently noticed that we're getting more and more interest in the coaching workshops and, and it gives me an opportunity to talk to people in, in these in the different companies and, and particularly the hospitals that are seeking these skills and what i learned is, is that there's a lot being put on these folks to really be sort of the leading edge in their organization in developing a continuous improvement culture at the at the operational level, whether it's it's in the office or the, the shop floor or the hospital um, care board. In all those settings, they're they're trying to engage people in continuous improvement activities. A lot of it is at huddle boards where, where team members, uh, staff bring up problems that they've seen. And it's a perfect opportunity for coaching. Uh, and it's also a, a, a place where coaching is necessary because it, it's, it, the coach can help people get more focused on exactly what the problem is and can, can prompt them to uh, go to the actual site of the problem, to the Gimba, and s see and talk to people and learn more than about what's actually happened. It makes the, it makes the problem solving um, much more precise, much more focused, and it greatly increases the, the likelihood that um, the improvements, the solutions are going to be sustainable. Um, Ideally, managers would be doing that, but in most companies, it's people from some kind of lean background, or in many situations, from some kind of industrial engineering, process engineering background. Most of these people have no preparation mm -hmm. in how to coach to help other people develop their thinking. So it sounds like there's a real need out there for, uh, for these skills? Well, I feel that there is based on my experience, both in the people who come to the LEI workshops uh, and in the pull that I'm getting to go into companies and help them develop their, their, their lean coordinators, their lean facilitators to also be coaches. Now the series is called uh, Skills for Developmental Coaching. Right. Uh, what is developmental coaching? Well, it's a particular focus of coaching. We, and it's, it's aimed at the particular need that I described. Deve and the, the purpose is helping develop the problem-solving thinking of the, of the people at the operational level who are participating in these problem-solving teams and in in these huddles. Um, so it doesn't all rest on the coach or the coordinator or the leader to, to be the primary problem solver. To, 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 I see this as a way of creating um, this culture that they're trying to, to start up. Is engagement is fine, and mo in most places have got engagement uh, at the operational level with these different mechanisms. But the next step is then to develop these people to be more self-sufficient problem solvers. Developmental coaching is a way to do that, and developmental coaching distinguished from what we traditionally think of coach, uh, coaching as, which is more what I call coaching for correction. And there's a, there's a fundamental principle that I hold to that, that you don't get very far developing, helping people develop how they think by telling them how to think. Most people just don't respond well to that. So this kind of coaching is a, an approach that prompts them to think and prompts them to look at their own thinking. Well, 
And now, two of the workshops focus on it to, um, a concept called humble inquiry, right. and there's uh, a basic and an advanced skills right. uh, workshop, each each distinct. What is humble inquiry, um, and why is it so important in coaching? Well, it's it's an approach to coaching where the coach does not come at it from the perspective of uh, of being the expert. It, it's uh, the coach does not assume that he or she knows more than the person who owns the problem, who has brought the problem to everybody's attention. So it, it's it's humble inquiry, questioning really, and it's questioning that's aimed at getting the person you're coaching to think and and really access what they know and use what they know and, and reflect on what they know, consider what they know. Um, so the responsibility, the ownership stays with that person. The, the humble part is, is, um, is a concept that comes from a, a, a long time leader in uh, the organizational culture field. A, a prof uh, professor from MIT named um, Ed Schein, and he wrote several books on uh, organizational culture and working with organizational culture, and toward the end of his life, because he had been a consultant and he reflected on what does it mean to help people, and he, he came to, to a perspective that for help to be really helpful, it shouldn't feel like the person helping is making you dependent on them. And so he said the way to level the playing field is is this humble inquiry. Uh, and and, and the, the way we operationalize that is you're asking open-ended questions rather than leading questions. So you're not saying to someone, why didn't you try this? It's exactly. How do you know that? Yes, so how do you know what what, when, you, when, you, when you talk to him, what did you learn? Mm -hmm. So it's really prompting people to access things they know that they aren't necessarily pulling in to their problems on it. Key point. And another one uh, in the series is on facilitation reflection. Why is that important? <laughs> because basically it's, it's where you get the benefit of continuous improvement. It's where you get the continuous part. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Continuous improvement runs off the cycle of, of plan, do, check, adjust. And in order to know how to adjust, you have to have set about to do something, set about to accomplish something, try to do it, then, then check to see what you actually got. And if there are differences between what you set out to get and what you got, or what you set out to do and what you actually did, then that's an opportunity to learn. It's particularly an opportunity to learn how to do whatever it is you're doing. It's also an opportunity to improve. And the key to that, even though it's not part of plan, do, check, adjust, is reflection, which is after you check, you stop and ask, okay, this is what I, this is what I got. This is what I know about why I got it. What can I learn from that? That's what turns plan, do, check, adjust into a learning cycle. And continuous improvement, it, 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 if you look at it, is really learning how to do things better. Reflection is not something that is particularly common or typical in our North American results-oriented approach. We tend to look at did we get the result? No, well, let's move on. Mm -hmm. There's no learning from that. And so it's really important for coaches of continuous improvement efforts, problem solving efforts, to get the, help, help the people who have participated in it stop and re look at what they did and what they got and reflect on any differences and pull the learning out. So it has to be facilitated. We just don't, we're, we're just not of the habit of stopping and doing it. Final uh, question: Can you tell us the what the series? Uh, you know, from uh, first, second, third. I think there's four workshops in the series, um, from beginning to end, and the sequence that they should be uh, taken. Okay. 
The first is is uh, to to help coaches build their skill at recognizing uh, good sound PDCA problem solving thinking. Um, because if you're going to coach somebody to help them develop their thinking, you have to have a good strong sense of it yourself. Then as you mentioned earlier, the, the second and third are skill building and, and the various aspects of using humble inquiry for developmental coaching. The basic stuff is, is um, asking open-ended questions, uh, learning to listen, learning to pay attention to where the person is in, in their in their problem solving thinking. And then, then in that workshop at the end of it, we put it to all those skills together in, into the humble inquiry practice. Um, there's a, there, there are particular things that you can you need to pay attention to as you're doing humble inquiry to, to help develop coaching thinking. And one of them, which we address in the second one, is what's the should? Why is the should a should? Mm -hmm. Because you're looking at a problem as the difference between what's happening and what should be happening. It's really helpful in this problem solving to clarify what exactly is the should. How do you know it's a should? What, who agrees that it's a should? And in many, many cases, there really doesn't exist a should. There's no standard. So part of the problem solving is getting agreement to a should. And then, then the fourth is, as you mentioned, uh, facilitating reflection, which is essentially getting the learning and the benefit out of the out of the PDCA process, the continuous improvement effort, the problem solving effort. Okay, makes sense. Seems like a logical sequence, and uh, I'll look forward to sitting in on the, some of the workshops Good. then. Look forward to, and I look forward to you going through it and hearing <laughs> your thoughts on it, okay? Great, great. Uh, to learn more, please visit uh, our website, lean.org, and go to the uh, education tab.